Uh, hi, my name is Mike Esnault. I'm one of the composers for the Nolans Project. I'm very happy with the way this project came out. I feel like we were up against a fairly daunting challenge of representing a lot of different types of music. New Orleans has so much going on musically. For us to try to produce that it was a pretty big challenge, but I'm really happy with the way everything turned out. One of the aspects of this project was to compose music that uh, represented New Orleans piano music. And of course, some of the giants in that music are Professor Longhair, Dr. John, James Booker. And those are the three guys that I sort of um, focused on when composing these pieces. So there were three pieces mainly, and the first piece that I did was, um, well, I started from the beginning, so I started with Professor Longhair. I, I had several of his pieces in mind, like Big Chief and uh, very famous tunes like that, and sort of kind of rolled the, the spirit of those into one tune. There's a taste of uh, early R&B in that, which is quintessential Professor Longhair. The next piece was more in the, um, the style of Dr. John, which is also a, an ensemble piece. Uh, that one involved a trio, just piano, bass, and drums. Very blues-based, like all of this music is. Of course, his style is a little bit more intricate than Professor Longhair. It's a little bit more um, involved. So I tried to uh, represent some of that in this piece. The last piece I did was a solo piano piece that comes out of the James Booker tradition. He was really the guy that everybody looked up to. He was the, the guru of New Orleans piano music. He's definitely one of my heroes. So in doing that piece, um, I tried to represent some of the virtuosic piano stuff that he does. Another aspect of this project was uh, writing traditional New Orleans music. What we did there was try to, again, sort of span the spectrum of that tradition. So we started uh, in the beginning, you know, with Jelly Roll Morton oriented stuff or King Oliver and worked our way through, uh, of course, Louis Armstrong, later artists like uh, even a Pete Fountain. We really did utilize players from New Orleans that really uh, do that music all the time and represent what it's really all about. And the last aspect of the project was the brass band music. The range of brass band music in New Orleans is pretty, pretty broad. So in the writing, it expands from being fairly simple to pretty intricate. When you take a band like Rebirth, I think of that band as being more or less very blues-based and very sort of riff-oriented, if you will. Some of the pieces that we wrote represented that. When you get into the Dirty Dozen, you're kind of talking about a different animal where these guys, um, a lot of the music is really worked out. There's more parts going on and uh, maybe some more dissonance, more, more complicated chord changes. Uh, one of the last pieces, uh, uh, the, the, sort of based off the trombone shorty style, which is, an emerging style, if you will. It comes out of all those brass band traditions, but of course he's incorporating more uh, backbeat, more uh, funk, more modern funk, I should say. Um, rock and roll, all that mixed in. It's, it's a very new sounding, but it still has the taste of um, uh, the brass band tradition. You know, he, that's his language, that's what he speaks. One of the keys of, of really having this come across correctly and uh, be a true representation of the music was finding the right players. So we, we really were careful in who we chose to use on these sessions. And for example, the banjo player who also played bass on the session, Don Vappi, is a true representation of what that music is. That's what he does. So he travels around the world doing this kind of music. So when we presented him with our material, you see it really come to life to the nth degree because these guys really know what to do with it. Um, so he would be one example. Uh, we also used Mark Bro, who was uh, the lead trumpet for the Preservation Hall Jazz Band. And, and one of the things about these, uh, these musicians through New Orleans is they come through these long lines of families that, that are involved in music. So Mark's uh, uncle uh, was the trumpet player for that band prior to him. And if you go back in, into his family uh, lineage, you just find trumpet players all over the place who are very well known in the traditional jazz uh, idiom. We 
really made an effort to find the right players to do that, and I think we did.